and let's now take a, a look at the uh, green growth facility or project. I see there is a, a question. Let's maybe take a few questions. So, Benoit, you're raising your hand, so you may ask a question, but I cannot give you the permission to do it. Okay, now I can you hear us? Yes, Benoit, you can talk now. So, Benoit, if you, we, we can't hear you, so maybe you can try to Write down your question in the chat window. Okay, I'm afraid we cannot uh, hear you. So is there anybody else who want to ask a question at this stage? A written or oral question? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, I will follow the advice of the other participants and continue if you don't mind. <laughs> so, uh, let's now take a look at the Vietnam Green Growth Strategy and at our project more specifically. Um, so, facing those challenges, uh, Vietnam set up in 2012 the Vietnam Green Growth Strategy which relies on three strategic tasks. The tasks are, are here uh, visible on the, on the screen. So first, reduce the intensity of the greenhouse gas emissions and promote the use of clean and renewable energy. Uh, th there's a clear focus here for this first task on intensity of greenhouse gas emissions, energy consumption, and improving the efficiency of the power supply sector. Uh, second, key task is greening the production. Well, the idea behind this is the uh, boosting the green sectors. So the idea is to increase the share of technology related to green growth and high tech in general. It's also the idea of increasing the standards in uh, commercial manufacturing and developing the, the clean technology sectors. And also promoting investment. So uh, building up the capacity of investment of banks and so on to um, to improve and enrich the natural capital and the the third um, uh, strategic task sorry is to is go greening lifestyle and promoting sustainable consumption the the key ideas here behind are both behavioral aspects let's try to reduce the consumption of uh, per per inhabitant of per services and also the development of the cities. So the um, urban planning here plays a, is a key word um, of these uh, third task. So these are the, the three key aspects of the Green Growth Strategy. I told you it dates from 2012. And if we zoom a little bit, 
on the, the objectives, the quantified objectives of the first strategic task, uh, here is what we have. So there are objectives by 2020, which are pretty quantified, pretty precise, and then orientations toward 2030 and 2050. Thereafter, there have been some other policies issued over the last year that come and complement those uh, longer term orientations. But here is what, uh, what was stated in the Green Growth Strategy. So by 2020, the idea was first to reduce the intensity of the, the greenhouse gas emissions, so the, the emissions per unit of GDP, by 8 to 10 percent compared to 2010. The idea was also is also to reduce the consumption uh, yeah, per unit of GDP, the energy consumption, sorry, per unit of GDP, and then to reduce the emissions of the energy sector, so the electricity production sector, compared to a business as usual scenario. And here already Vietnam was suggesting that if there is enough international support, the, uh, uh, the targets could be increased. And then there are some other um, objectives by 2030 and 2050, which are in the same type of uh, in the same type of, uh, of concept. So first, reduce the greenhouse gas emissions and focus on the energy sector until 2030, and then by 2050, look at the total emissions. This is, these are the, the quantified targets for the first uh, strategic task. Which, which make, makes it actually uh, a pretty ambitious plan uh, for, for Vietnam if you compare it to, uh, to other countries in the region. In terms of scope, I'm sorry I see on the screen here that the table on the left is not that clear, but you have in green all the different countries of the Southeast Asian region, and vertically you have all uh, various dimensions that are taken into account in some of the Green growth action plans are uh, the most, the closest uh, action plans you may have. And if you compare that, you can see that first, Vietnam, of course, is not the first country in the region to tackle, to tackle green growth, but that the scope of their policy is uh, larger than other countries. So the number of dimensions they, they took into account by 2012 was uh, pretty ambitious as well. Since the Green Growth Strategy, there has been also the approval of an action plan with a certain number of activities covering all the sectors to make that strategy uh, a reality. So what is in the action plan? So the very first priority for the first years was the institutional setup, so setting up committees, revising master plans, setting up, uh, setting up uh, groups um, and, uh, and task force and so on. One of the key ideas also is that the provinces have to elaborate their own uh, local green growth action plan. And that's where BTC has, uh, is playing a role uh, these days. We are supporting three provinces in elaborating that action plan, it's in making a diagnosis and then uh, analyzing what could be the priorities and what are the cost benefits of each uh, opportunities. And of course, one of the, the key action of the moment or at national level is to set up the, the green growth finance uh, framework. It means developing guidelines for green investment. It's also getting ready to access the green climate fund. And also, our project falls in that category of action. So the green growth strategy facility is under creation with, uh, with our support. And of course, beyond that, there is uh, still a need for capacity and resources that are under uh, study or, or refinement. This is for the action plan and the, the ongoing actions at national level. Sorry. So our green growth strategy facility doesn't try to solve all the barriers we have to implement. Sorry. So we are not trying to solve all the, uh, the barriers that are currently uh, slowing down the implementation of the Green Growth Strategy. If you look here at the traditional barriers as, as uh, witnessed by the international community, there are behavioral barriers, institutional, regulatory barriers, financial barriers, and of course, technical barriers. Uh, 
our project focused on the financial aspect. Uh, according to the governmental estimations, there is between 20 and 30 billion US dollars needed for the investment uh, for the developing the technology and changing the, the structure of the economy to implement the, the Green Growth Action Plan. Those estimations have been modeled with using cost abatement curves. Uh, I don't know if you're uh, familiar with that. I just put a little uh, image of that on the bottom right. The idea is that you look at the uh, improvement of opportunity with that action and at the cost of investing in that uh, action. Of course, that kind of thing only reflects the actions that have an investment behind, or most of the time they have an investment behind. It may, it may um, hide a little bit some other key actions uh, that are necessary to make uh, the Green Growth Action Plan a success, like for instance, shifting away the, uh, the, the subsidies away from fossil fuels. Um, so that's for the, grand, uh, the, the national strategy. And now let's, uh, take a, let's zoom into uh, our project in particular. So the overall target impact of our project is to, to make sure that the Vietnam Green Growth Strategy is a success. And how to do that? By creating a new facility. So in short, it's a kind of fund. Uh, and that fund should enable, to, should support green initiatives that contribute to the Green Growth Strategy. And so we have how to set up that facility. First, we have to uh, establish it. I will come back to that in a moment. We have also to increase the capacity of the different uh, local stakeholders related to the facility. We also intend to support pilot activities in three provinces, so green initiatives in three provinces. And uh, we have to set up a call for proposals to select the future projects to be supported. And of course, we hope we can disseminate a little bit and replicate uh, things. That's what we try to do with this webinar as well. Um, so the project is supporting through pilot projects three provinces, just to give you a little bit of uh, geography of the country. We are supporting uh, the province of Hatin in the center of Vietnam, and also Ninh Thuan and Binh Thuan that are located in the, the southeast of the country. Uh, those three provinces, in those three provinces, BTC is also active uh, with a very large project on climate change adaptation to face the consequences of, uh, of climate change. So now I'd like to, to look at um, two key objectives that, that lead us in the establishment of the facility itself. So on one hand, the facility has to attract climate finance. And on the other hand, it should allocate that finance to green initiatives that are in line with the Green Growth Action Plan. So uh, to attract the climate finance, it means that the upcoming facility should first be well positioned in, let's say, the landscape of climate finance. I will, uh, will detail that a little bit in a moment. Uh, on the other hand, the facility must also have governance and operation standards that are reliable enough to attract the, the, the funding sources. Today we have achieved that part of the job and we are getting feedback from uh, national and international stakeholders on the draft versions we have before we can officially establish it. On the other hand, so when the facility will have uh, sources of funding, we have to set up a selection process to detect the right green project. And then we have to support pilot projects in three provinces. Just to make it brief, uh, the selection process was included in all the, the uh, proposed draft facility operation manual that we, we have developed. We are currently getting the feedback from the stakeholders, but so uh, our job is almost done with that regard. And the uh, support of pilot projects is on the way. Proposals have been submitted by the local authorities. We have evaluated them, and there was a technical committee who assessed them, and we are in the phase of 
um, fine tuning those that selection and to contract uh, the the agreement. Uh, two weeks ago, we we uh, we announced in uh, one of the provinces the two projects that we are going to support. Okay, just now let's give you a little bit more details about that. So if you look at the first objective to attract and manage climate finance, I told you we have to position the facility in a landscape of actors and entities active in, um, in climate finance. So there are many actors around climate finance. It's true within the country, it's true around the country. Uh, I know that those figures are not very, very clear, but to give you an example, in Vietnam, so there is both, of course, the private sector and the public sector, including the, uh, the state-owned enterprises. And there behind, you still have a variety of, uh, of actors. It could be SMEs, households, uh, banks, and so on, governmental agencies, and so on and so on. And all those uh, entities have a role to play in the climate finance at some point, and we, we have to, to carefully study what will be the role of our facility. It's true also if we look at the, the climate finance landscape at global level, um, you may be aware that there, are a few, there is a huge variety of, uh, of sources, of intermediaries, of instruments, of uh, recipients, and so on. And uh, again, we have to make sure that we clearly know what our facility wants to do compared to the other entities here playing a role in the country. I told you also that we have to, to create a, a facility at the stand, international standards that, that are convincing enough or reliable enough for funding sources. Uh, the, leading, uh, the leading source of, of standards that we use was the Green Climate Fund. The Green Climate Fund, in order to accredit entities in the countries, proposes several types of requirements to, to meet. Uh, these are fiduciary standards and also environmental and social safeguards. And in the fiduciary standards, you have requirements that are basic for all the entities and also some more specialized uh, requirements specific to the, the instruments that you plan to use in the country. For instance, uh, if you want to, if an entity, a candidate entity wants to provide loans in the country, you have to demonstrate that you are, you are capable enough to, uh, to manage those loans. Uh, just to say that the Green Climate Fund has been a source of inspiration for elaborating the, the procedures and uh, the, government, the governance bodies of our facility. So now the second big task I told you was to support green uh, initiatives, uh, starting with the pilot in three provinces. The criteria we use again they are um, they are based on the green climate fund and other best practices in the in the region. The criteria are not only technical. You have, um, for instance, the relevance. So is it is the project the candidate project in line with the green growth action plan or the green growth strategy? Is it effective? So will the results be achieved? Is it uh, efficient? Um, so uh, in terms of uh, monitoring, evaluation, cost benefit analysis, and so on. Um, what will be the long-term impact after the, uh, the intervention? Is this uh, sustainable? I mean, will it run for long-term or uh, does it need additional funding? There is also a question of development effectiveness. Is it aligned with the, uh, the development principles like ownership? And of course, how do you manage the results and so on? And then you have the environmental and social safeguards that have to be taken into account when you select those pilot projects. So what you have to remember at this stage is that uh, we try to, to rely on the best practices and the green climate fund to set up the selection criteria for the future green projects and also for the provincial projects, pilot projects we are going to support. Uh, 